Well, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Automotive Insight. Today we've got a 2017 GMC Yukon. Uh, the backstory behind this car is uh, we do some work for a local shop when it is a little bit above uh, their capabilities. And the story behind this one is it needed an ABS actuator. Uh, they were going to replace it and send it here for us to program. They ran into a little bit of issues with some of the fittings and long story short, we ended up going up there and running some additional brake lines and, and making some fittings and stuff for them to get that on there. Uh, but anyway, all that's done, everything's bled out. We've got the new module in it, but it's a GM and it needs to be programmed. So that's what we're going to be getting into today. Let's get into it. All right, so before we get started with anything with the scan tool, a uh, couple things that we always do. Number one, critical, you put a battery maintainer on the battery because you don't want that voltage dropping below whatever the minimum threshold is, usually around, uh, usually it's like 12.1 or something. I don't remember GM off the top of my head, but we got a battery maintainer on. Another thing that you don't have to do, but I like to do is I will close the door latch so that it thinks that it is uh, closed so we don't have anything pulling any excessive uh, current while we're doing the reflash. All right guys, couple things I wasn't thinking about while we were filming but are worth mentioning is that before you get into the scan tool, you need to read through your service data. Uh, reason being is because sometimes your service data is going to have you pull fuses or pull relays. Sometimes it will have you disconnect the cooling fans all in effort to keep it from dropping uh, battery voltage while you're doing this. Another reason is because we had talked about battery voltage uh, being low. It will fail the programming procedure. Some cars, if the battery voltage is too high, it will also fail the programming procedure. Now, the reason that that's important is because sometimes it's not as simple as just going back and trying it again. Sometimes you brick a module. So those things are very important. Read through your service data. Let's get back to the video. So let's hop into TechLine Connect and uh, we'll get going with that. All right, so brief rundown of how we got to this point. You can actually download this uh, cost at the cost at time of filming is $45 for one VIN. You get that from AC Delco TDS and you have to download various drivers and stuff both for SPS and for whatever J device you're using. We are using the Altel uh, Maxi Flash that we got with our, our big Altel tool. We downloaded those drivers to make everything work on it. Once you get into this screen, we've got our VIN auto detected here. Uh, we are going to go to, on this menu here, since we replaced the module, we are going to replace and program, and then we're going to go down to next. All right, now we're going to go in and pick which module we replaced, which would be the electronic brake control module. Set up and configuration normal. So we'll go to next. The current vehicle will take one of you. Yes, proceed. That is the correct VCI. All right, so it's got our latest file here in it. It's going to show us what our history is over here. We'll go ahead and hit next. Uh, and this is basically just going to tell you what, what is going to be happening on these. So we'll hit start programming. Action complete. There is our, uh, this, since it's registered per VIN, it's letting you know that your one VIN slot is, has been used on here. 
I'm not concerned about that. We'll look at that later. But here is uh, your warranty claim code in case something goes wrong or whatever. Um, but anyway, we will go to clear DTCs. Because chances are it said a bunch of codes in other modules when it did this. Lost comms uh, codes in it. So it didn't automatically, I'm not super familiar with uh, Tech Connect, but it didn't automatically do the uh, configurations like the zero points and stuff. So we're going back into the same module and we, instead of doing program, we're going to do setup and configuration. So we'll click on that and we'll go down to next. This is all the stuff that it's going to do and that you need to do. So we've got our steering wheel straight. We've got our, um, uh, park brake off and this is all the uh, various things that it's going to be doing this is the equivalent basically of a zero point calibration so we'll hit next and we will hit finish now that is set up. Pass, pass, okay. So, now we are done. No more lights, let me cycle the key. No warning lights, no messages. So I'd say that that is a success. All right, guys, so well, that's going to wrap this one up. So a couple notes. Uh, when it comes to programming, we don't do a ton of it here because, I mean, we're typically working on 10, 15, 20-year-old cars, uh, but we do do it. When it comes to programming, uh, they are all a little bit different, but they're basically going to be doing the same thing. So like on the Toyota, it would have automatically done any initializations, just prompted you to do it. You wouldn't have had to go back and do it in a separate thing. So I'm more familiar with the Toyota side. GM is not that dissimilar. Uh, a couple of extra steps involved. Ultimately, basically everything to program except for Chrysler is not that difficult. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult when you're trying to get the specs that your computer needs uh, you, before you download whatever uh, software you need, whether that is uh, Tech Connect or uh, Honda HDS or Toyota GTS. You need to look at what the requirements for that are. Uh, so sometimes it's Windows Pro, sometimes it's Windows 10 or 11. Uh, it's going to want to have various drivers up to date. Sometimes it wants to have web browsers up to date. So a lot of like when we did this one, uh, that computer is relatively new to us. It took us way longer getting the computer prepped for the program than it did to do the programming. The programming, all told, we were in at about 20 minutes uh, it took about an hour of setup for the computer. So do some research on that. As far as cost, they are pretty much all pretty reasonable. Again, with the exception of Chrysler, it is just a constant money grab with them, whether that is auto auth or the, uh, there's like three different subscriptions you have to do with Chrysler. They suck. When it comes to programming, it's really nothing to be intimidated about. Uh, certain cars, if you've got, especially Euro cars, if you're going to be doing them, you need to make sure that you have a good, hefty, quality battery maintainer because they tend to leave a ton of modules on. They're going to be drawing like 30, 40 amps just with the key on, and you will suck a battery down in no time with them. So you need to have something that's got some oomph behind it to keep that up and running uh, for that. 
So anyway, guys, that's going to wrap this one up for today. Hopefully, we earned a thumbs up from you. Let us know what you think down in the comment section. We have new content for you every single week, so consider subscribing to the channel. And with all that being said, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.